This code imports several libraries, including pandas, numpy, and matplotlib.pyplot that provide helpful functions and tools for analyzing and visualizing data. It also imports machine learning tools such as SVM, Metrics, Adaboost Classifier, and Standard Scaler that can be used for building and evaluating predictive models. Additionally, the code imports date offset from pandas.tseries.offsets, which allows for performing date calculations and incorporating date information into data analysis. Lastly, the code imports classification report from sklearn.metrics, which is used for obtaining detailed information on the performance of a classification model. Overall, this code sets up the environment and tools necessary for performing data analysis and building machine learning models. This code starts by importing the OHLCV open high low close volume dataset into a pandas data frame called OHLCV DF. The dataset is being read in from the file emerging markets OHLCV to CSV and is being assigned to the variable OHLCV core DF. The index column of the data frame is set to date, which is the date of the market data. The time format of the dates in the dataset is being inferred, and the dates are also being parsed. This allows for easier manipulation and analysis of the data in the data frame. Finally, the code prints the first few rows of the data frame to review and confirm that it has been successfully imported. This code is used to filter a dataset by selecting only two columns, the date index and the close price, and storing them in a variable called signalsDF. Then, the code uses the PCT change function to calculate the percentage change in the close prices over a certain period of time and adds it as a new column called actual returns in the signals DF data frame. Next, the code drops all rows with missing values as the PCT change function will return NAN, not a number for the first row. The head and tail functions are then used to display the first and last five rows of the filtered data set, respectively. This code snippet is often used in financial analysis to calculate and visualize the returns of a particular asset over a period of time. This code sets two variables, short window and long window, with values of 4 and 100 respectively. These represent the number of days used to calculate two types of simple moving averages SMA for a given stock, represented by a data frame called Signals DF. The first SMA, called SMA Fast, is calculated using the close column of the data frame and a rolling window of four days. The second SMA, called SMA slow, uses the same close column but with a longer window of 100 days. The data frame is then updated, dropping any rows with missing values, and the first and last few rows are displayed for review. Overall, this code is used to calculate and display two different types of moving averages for a given stock with the number of days used for each being adjusted based on the values of the short window and long window variables. This code creates a new column in the data frame called signal and sets all values in that column to 0.0. .0. Then, using conditional statements, it checks the values in the actual returns column. If the value is greater than or equal to 0, it changes the corresponding value in the signal column to 1, indicating a signal to buy the stock. If the value is less than zero, it changes the corresponding value in the signal column to Magus 1, indicating a signal to sell the stock short. Finally, the code displays the first and last few rows of the updated data frame with the new signal column. In summary, this code generates buy and sell signals based on the values in the actual returns column and updates the data frame with this information. This code uses the value counts function to count the number of occurrences of each unique value in the signal column of the data frame called signals DF. It then displays the result, showing the number of times each value appears. This is useful for understanding the distribution of data in the signal column and can help to identify any patterns or outliers. This code calculates the strategy returns and adds them to the signals DF data frame. The calculation is performed by multiplying the actual returns column with the signal column, which has been shifted by one row. This takes into account the signal from the previous day to determine the strategy returns for the current day. The result is then added as a new column called strategy returns in the signals DF data frame. By doing this, the code is able to compare the returns of the strategy with the actual returns and assess the effectiveness of the chosen strategy. Finally, the code displays the first and last few rows of the updated data frame for review. 
This code is meant to plot the strategy returns of an investment strategy. It uses the Coomprod method to create a cumulative product of the strategy returns, which is plotted using the plot method. The strategy returns are calculated by adding one to the strategy returns data frame and multiplying it by the cumulative product, which represents the overall performance of the strategy. The resulting plot provides a visual representation of how the strategy has performed over time, allowing for an analysis of its effectiveness. This Python code is creating a data frame called X by assigning a copy of the columns SMF fast and SMS slow from the data frame signals DF. The columns are then shifted, meaning each value is moved to the previous row and any resulting missing values are dropped. This new data frame, X, contains the values from the original columns, but shifted by one row. Lastly, the code calls the .head function to view the first few rows of the new data frame. This code is useful for creating lagged versions of features, which can be used for time series data analysis. This code creates a new variable called Y and assigns it the values in the signal column of a data frame called signals DF. This means that the target set will only consist of the values in the signal column. The next line of code then reviews the value counts of this target set, showing how many instances of each unique value are present. This can give insight into the distribution of the target variable and help with understanding the data. This piece of Python code is used for selecting the beginning date of the training period. It first finds the minimum index value of the variable x, which is likely a date corresponding to a particular data point. Then, it assigns this value to the variable training begin. Lastly, it prints out the value of training begin, which is the start date of the training period. This code is helpful in situations where a data set is to be split into training and testing sets for machine learning purposes. By finding and displaying the training begin date, the codemer can ensure that the correct time period is being used for training the model. This code is used to set the ending period for the training data with an offset of three months from the minimum date in the index of the variable X. The variable X could represent a data set or a time series. The date offset function is used to set the time interval of three months and this is added to the minimum date in the index. This results in the training end variable containing the end date for the training data. This end date is then printed to the console for display. This code is useful for setting the training data period, which is typically used in machine learning or forecasting models to train the model on a specific time period before testing it on new data. This code first creates two data frames, X-Train and Y-Train. The data for X-Train comes from the original data frame X, while the data for Y-Train comes from the original data frame Y. The data in these two data frames is selected based on a specified interval given by the variables training begin and training end. The code lock function is used to select the appropriate rows of data from X and Y based on the specified interval. The X train data frame is then reviewed using the head function, which simply displays the first few rows of the data frame for easy viewing. This code is commonly used in machine learning tasks where the data is often split into training and test sets for model building and evaluation purposes. This Python code aims to generate two data frames, X-test and Y-test. The first line uses the dot lock method to select a subset of rows from the original data frame X, with the starting point being the value of training end plus one hour. Training end is likely a variable that holds a specific date or time frame. The date offset hours equals one function indicates that we want to offset the selected rows by one hour. The result of this operation is assigned to the X test data frame. Similarly, the second line uses the dot lock method to select a subset of rows from the original data frame Y with the same starting point and offset. The resulting data frame is assigned to Y test. Lastly, the dot head function is used to display the first few rows of the X test data frame allowing us to review the data before moving on to further analysis. This Python code is used to scale the features data in order to improve the performance of a machine learning model. First, a standard scalar instance is created, which will be used to scale the data. Then, the scalar is applied to the X-train data, which is used to fit the scalar model. This means that the scalar will learn the distribution of the data 
and use it to transform the data into a standardized form. The transformed data is then saved in the X-Train scaled data frame. The same process is repeated for the X-Test data, once again using the scalar model that was previously fitted with the X-Train data. Scaling the data is important because it ensures that all features are on a similar scale, which can improve the performance of certain machine learning algorithms. By using the scaler, the data is transformed into a standardized form, making it easier for the model to understand and make accurate predictions. This code snippet utilizes Support Vector Machines SVM to train a classifier model using the SVC Support Vector Classifier algorithm. First, an SVM classifier instance is instantiated using the SVC function. Then the model is fitted to the data using the training data, which is typically pre-processed and scaled beforehand to improve the model's performance. Once the model is trained, it is used to make predictions on the testing data, and the predicted values are stored in the variable SVM pred. Finally, the first 10 predicted values are shown using list slicing in Python. This code essentially performs the key steps in creating an SVM model for classification and evaluating its performance on unseen data. This Python code uses a classification report to evaluate a model using two sets of data, the predictions made by the model and the testing data. The code calculates metrics such as precision, recall, and F1 score to evaluate how well the model performed on the testing data. The classification report provides a comprehensive overview of the model's performance and can help identify any areas where the model may need improvement. The classification report is then printed to display the results of the evaluation. By using a classification report, this code allows for a more thorough assessment of the model's performance and can help in making informed decisions for future improvements. This Python code creates a new empty data frame called predictions DF. Then, it adds predictions made by a support vector machine SVM model to the data frame under the column titled predicted. It also adds the actual returns from a signals data frame under the column titled actual returns. The code then calculates the strategy returns by multiplying the predicted values with the actual returns and adds them to the data frame under the column titled strategy returns. The final two lines of code display the first and last five rows of the data frame to review the results. This code is useful for comparing the predicted returns from the SVM model with the actual returns and strategy returns to evaluate the effectiveness of the model. This Python code generates a plot showing the performance of a trading strategy compared to the actual returns. The code first calculates the cumulative returns for both the actual returns and the strategy returns by adding one to each value and then multiplying the cumulative product of all previous values. The resulting data is then used to create a plot with the title baseline. The plot is then saved as a PNG file called baselineactualvisastrategy.png. Lastly, the code prints out the last value of the cumulative returns representing the final performance of the strategy compared to the actual returns. This code is useful for analyzing the effectiveness of a trading strategy and comparing it to the actual market performance. The given code initializes an instance of the AdaBoost classifier model with 50 estimators, denoted as ABC. This means that the model will be able to take in and process data 50 times before making a final prediction. This code involves using a machine learning model called ABC to make predictions on a dataset. Firstly, the model is trained on a training dataset, where it learns patterns and relationships between the inputs X-Train scaled and outputs Y-Train. This is done using the fit function. Once the model has been trained, it is then used to predict values on a testing dataset X-Test scaled using the dot predict function. These predicted values are stored in the ABC pred variable. Finally, the code prints out the first 10 predicted values for review. This code is evaluating the accuracy of a classification model using the testing data. The first line uses the metrics module to calculate the accuracy score by comparing the predicted values ABC pred to the actual values Y test. The second line then uses the classification report function to generate a report that shows the precision, recall, F1 score, and support for each class in the testing data. Finally, the third line prints the report to the console. This allows the user to see how well the model performed on the testing data 
and to identify any potential issues or areas for improvement. This Python code creates a new empty predictions data frame using the pandas library and assigns it to the variable abcpredf. The index of this data frame is set to match the index of the xtest data frame. This will allow for easy comparison and analysis of the model predictions. The next line of code adds the predictions made by the ABC model to the data frame under the column name predicted. Then, the actual returns from the signals DF data frame are added to the data frame under the column name actual returns. These steps allow for a side-by-side -side comparison of the model's predictions with the actual returns. The following line adds a new column called strategy returns to the data frame, which is calculated by multiplying the predicted values with the actual returns. Finally, the code displays the first three rows and last three rows of the data frame for review and analysis. This allows for a quick visual inspection of the data to ensure it is accurate and ready for further analysis. This code is plotting the actual returns versus the strategy returns using a cumulative product plot. The data is obtained from the ABC Pred DF data frame, which contains the actual returns and strategy returns. The title of the plot is set to AdaBoost, 3-month train, SMA4100. Once the plot is created, the code uses getFigure to access the plot and savefig to save it as a PNG file with the name adaboostactualvstrategy.png. Finally, the code uses cumprod to calculate the cumulative product of the data and tail1 to get the last value, which is the final cumulative return. This gives an idea of the overall performance of the strategy. This Python code is using the print function to output a string that says hello world. This is a common phrase used in code to demonstrate the basic functionality of a language or its syntax. In Python, the print function takes in a string as an input and displays it on the screen. The code simply assigns the string hello world to the